This is the Shrimp Trawler Video Channel Stratomatic Baseball Excel Game of the Week. Welcome back, baseball fans. 1979 82 Fall League Game of the Week. Today, in the Game of the Week, it's the Philadelphia Phillies and the New York Mets live from Shea Stadium in Queens. And boy, it's the era of, well, the Phillies. Uh, if you recall, 80 world champions, 81 division winners, Mets. Oh boy. Um, let's take an overall look at the standings, shall we? In this timeline, in this division, in the Fall League, here we go. National League has a bunch of clubs trying to run away and hide with things, one of those being the Phillies. Phillies got a three-game lead on the Braves, Mets four and a half, Marlins five back. But look at all these top guys. The Reds having a nice start. You got one of these expansion teams, actually two of these expansion teams playing 600 baseball. And you also have out west, the Astros, doing some great stuff. Um, yeah. So, uh, whoa, look at the competitive nature at the top of these divisions. And again, uh, you're going to see that often um, because you're only playing about 90% of a division series, uh, a schedule. You play four games uh, outside your division, but otherwise you play a possible 30 games, minimum, minimum of 20, maximum of 30 games amongst your own division. You play 10 games against a rival. Up to 10 games. Best of 10 games against a rival in your division. I try to, that's one of the things I wanted to do in this league is experiment with scheduling and playoff format and roster building, stuff like that. It's more of an experimental fall league. But it brings us to the fall game of the week between the Phillies and Mets. Let's take a look at what happened. We opened up at the Vet in Philly. Craig Swan for the Mets. Eric Schall. So what Philadelphia has done is they know they have the offense, they know they have Carlton, and they have Tub McGraw. So they went out and decided to go pluck some pitchers off of other staffs. So they found Eric Schall they stole from the Padres, Ray Burris from the Expos for this particular time, Roy Thomas, Ray Searage, Dick Drago. They, those are far enough Philadelphia, but they hope that they will be the additions to get this Philly team to a World Series. They need more pitching help. Mets, on the other hand, have um, have a really intriguing offense. A lot of speed, a lot of batting average, not a lot of power necessarily. Um, but anyway, in this particular game one, Craig Swan versus Eric Schall, and this is goose eggs, folks, for a nice chunk of this thing. Until on the bottom of the seventh inning, you get a, a, a Mike Schmidt double. And with two outs, Keith Moreland drives in with a single, one zip. And both guys go the distance, folks. Swan, that was the only run he gave up. Three hits, a walk and six Ks. But Eric Schall, three hit shutout, two walks, three strikeouts. One to nothing. Where is the offense? Philadelphia beats the Mets. One nothing. Well, the offense, ladies and gentlemen, will be in game two. <laughs> Game two from Philadelphia. Final score, Philadelphia 20 burger. Philadelphia 20, Mets four. The Mets start Frank Tanana. He was looking for a home after some shoulder problems that knocked him out of 1980. The Mets came calling for him. Dominates left-handed batters, as you can imagine. So the Phillies decided to put lefties Gray Gross, Bake McBride, and Rob Wilfong all on the bench. And that meant that it was batting practice, as Tanana's fastball is not near what it used to be. He gets knocked out by the fourth inning, and then with the bases loaded, Doug Bear comes in and proceeds to walk one, two, three, four runs in with four straight walks. Thank you, Doug Bear, and the Mets. Good night. Have a nice day. That's basically your ball game there. Carlton was the starter for Philadelphia. You know what? He went five innings and he tapped out and said, I, I gotta I, I wanna go play golf or something. So he leaves after five innings with a 14 to 1 lead. 
just to get qualified for that cheap victory. And his bullpen of Roy Thomas and Roy Searage get the victory. 24 Philadelphia. My goodness, we've all played in that little league game, folks, one way or the other, haven't we? Yeah, the 24 game. And you're like, isn't there a mercy rule? And the answer is no, there's not. So, Phillies need uh, one more win in this best of five series. And we go to Shea Stadium for a game number three. For the Phillies, it will be one of those imports, the expensive imports, Ray Burris, his 1981 Montreal Expo tenure, 9-7, 304 ERA, and 136 innings in what could be considered a full season. That's the year of the strike, so the innings pitch are going to be down. But that was a full season. You can pitch on three days rest. And for the Mets, another import to help them out, Glenn Abbott. Glenn Abbott was a Mariner. 12 and 12 with a 410 ERA. Pitching in that ballpark, they gave up a lot of home runs, hoping hoping that cavernous Shea Stadium will limit that. Ray Burris, Glenn Abbott, and Shea Stadium for a game three in the game of the week. Philadelphia decided to shuffle their lineup again up 2-0 in the series. Let some of the reserves play today. So just ahead of time, letting you know that Larry Boa, the normal shortstop, is on the bench to start this one. Lonnie Smith is on the bench, and Gray Gross is on the bench to start this. Those are three good Philadelphia players trying to see if they can beat um, the Mets with the junior varsity. So, Leading off for the Phillies, left fielder Larry Herndon. 68, triple 1-2, that's a double. Pete Rose, 64, third X. And that's Ray Knight's at two. He's 17 at third. And he kicks the ground ball. Oh, boy. Runners on the corners. For Keith Moreland of Feeling. 63. Short X. This is Rance Mullinex at 3 14. That's a double play ball. But the run will score. Base is empty. Two outs for Mike Schmidt. Bounces to third. Again, this is Ray Knight. And he makes the play again. That was a 5-4-3 double play. There we go. All right. one nothing Phillies. It'll be John Stearns leading off for the Mets. 39 is a walk. Ace Steeler. Something interesting about these Mets. They got some speed here. Stearns is an A. Jerry Remy's an A. Lee Mazzilli's an A. Steve Henderson a B. Dan Meyer a B. Hubie Brooks a B. You know, nice, nice wheels. Down a run, Jerry Remy. And catching today is Bob Boone with a minus three arm. Ouch. Yeah, let's think about that a little longer. Jerry Remy. 2-5 and on cue, Jerry Remy hits into a 4-6-3 double play instead of a bunt, hit and run, or stolen base attempt. Oh well. Joe Youngblood, 62, flies to left. Top of the second, it is Bake Sale. Bake McBride, 2-5 first. Bob Boone. 111 walk. Mickey Klutz getting the start at shortstop today. Former Oakland A. 2 5, 6 4 3 double play. Lima Zilli, 33, bounce the first. Steve Henderson, 2 6, single 1 3, that's a base hit. Dan Meyer, 47, single 1 8, is a base hit. Hubie Brooks, 63, right X. This is McBride, a 2-E-4 in right field, but Big McBride took a bad angle. That turns into a double, and your Mets have scored. We have a 1-1 tie. Second and third, one out, Ray Knight. Infield's going to come up here. 62 is a sack without a left. Runner at second, two outs. Rance Mullinex skies the center field. 2-1 Mets into the third. It's Rob Wilfong. 65, base hit, B stealer, Gary Math Maddox. He's gonna have a little bit of fun with a hit and run. Runner has to steal on a seven. Runner steals successfully on a one. Runner does not quite catch the T rating. We got a stolen base for Will Fong. Ball uh, drifts into shallow center field, but he stays put at second base and the ball is retrieved. Runner at second now for Maddox as he swung through the hit and run. And he'll swing away. 55, skies the shallow center, leaving the runner at second base. Larry Herndon, 
49, second C. Now he's at third base with two outs, though, for Pete Rose. 37's a walk, and it's Keith Moreland of Feeling. One and six, let's take a look at Keith <clears throat> Moreland of Feeling. Um, nice rookie card. My goodness, who is the best Philly rookie? Is it Keith Moreland hitting uh, 314? No, it's not. It's Lonnie Smith hitting 339. But anyway, fantastic rookie card for Keith Moreland. 1-6 is the single to right field, and that'll score Will Fong to tie the game. And now you got the dangerous, Mike Schmidt. 1-9, and he strikes out. 2-2, two two, bottom of the third inning. It's John Stearns, 47 is a K. Jerry Remy, 2-7, a base hit, a stealer. Now they've tied it up, they're gonna be aggressive here, try a little stolen base action. And that is going to be out stealing by the gun of Bob Boone. Joe Youngblood, 65. He bounces to second base. Okay, nothing happened there. Into the fourth we go. It's Bake Sale. McBride, 58 to base hit. Bob Boone, 56, pops the first. Mickey Klutz, 2 4. Another 6 4 3. Double play for Mickey Klutz. Got a couple of those today. Bomber of the fourth, it's Lee Mazzilli. 38 is a walk. A stealer. We learned our lesson last inning, we'll stay put. Steve Henderson. 3-6 is a walk, here come the Mets with a couple of base runners for Dan Meyer. 2-6 pops out. Hubie, Babbling, Brooks, 65, second C. Runners in scoring position with two outs for Ray Knight. 4-12 for Ray Knight is a bouncer to first base. 2-2 two, two affair. Into the fifth. Rob Wilfong, 65. Base hit for the B Steeler. Malik's going to try another hit and run. And same result last time. He swings through it. And runner has to steal. This time he is gunned down by Bear Stearns. John Stearns guns him down. Stealing. Wow. One out now for Maddox. 48. Flies to right and with two outs. Herndon, 42, bounce to first. Bunch of base running blunders thus far in this one. Into the bottom of the fifth we go. Let's pause a moment for station identification. This is the Shrimp Trawler video channel. Este es el canal de videos de camaroneros. I'll be Rance Mullinex leading off. Two sixes a walk. John Stearns, two three. Fielder's choice, a stealer. Remy's going to hit and run this time. And he rolls the 11, but it's the B to A, so it moves runner up. It's not a stolen base chance. So now he has Stearns at second. For Joel Youngblood, let's take a look at this card, folks. So Joel Youngblood, in case you forgot, in 1981, yep, he wins the batting title in the year of the strike by hitting 350 for the Mets. Yeah, folks, the Mets have some nice pieces here. It's, you know, I mean... Youngblood, Mazzilli, Henderson, Hubie Brooks at 307, Ray Knight at 318. I mean, you got some nice Jerry Remy at 313. You got some nice pieces on this Met team. They're not a ragtag bunch. Big moment here for the 350 hitting Joel Youngblood with a runner at uh, third and two outs. Second and two outs. The pitch. Youngblood, 38, is a fly ball to left field. It stays tied at two. Abbott and Burris, both starter sixes. Their breaking inning is, a, is here. It is Pete Edward Rose. Two seven base hit. Pete's on. For Keith Moreland a feeling. Two seven, that is a base hit because you had to hold Pete Rose at first base because Pete's a B stealer. And what would have been a ground ball play for a slower runner turns into a base hit through the hole. You got runners on the corners. Nobody out, and Mike Schmidt. Let's play it up. You're down 0-2 in the series. The pitch to Mike Schmidt. 48. That's a sack fly to center. Now you got uh, one out, man at first for Babe McBride. 2-10, and that's a 1-6-3 double play. Well, way to battle back, Glenn Abbott. Two guys on on the cheap single plus, on the ground ball plus. Only surrenders a sack fly and a double play. 
3-2 Phillies, bottom of the sixth. Ray Burr's breaking inning. It'll be Lee Mazzilli. By the way, just as you saw in the previous game, both teams crush left-handed pitching. So the fact that Burr's an Abbott or righties might give them more shelf life. Mazzilli, 312, is a low max. Steve Henderson, 68, single on a one, line out. And Dan Meyer pops to second base into the seventh. Abbott will continue. Two batters will break him. 3-2 game. It's Bob Boone. 45, lines are short. Mickey Klutz can't hit into a double play this time. 35 for Mickey is a sky to center field. Uh, Larry Boa readies to play shortstop for Mickey in the bottom half of the inning. Rob Wilfong, 37, is a K. So Boa comes in to play short. Now you got some great defense. That's the only defender to bring in for the Phillies, trying to protect a 3-2 lead and protect Ray Burris from a defeat. It is 3-2. Stretch time here in Shea Stadium. We are enjoying listening to uh, Liquid Liquid, early 80s no-wave band from uh, New York. Um, uh, with this uh, collection of, uh, of hits, I believe this one is the, uh, this is what White Lines eventually became from Grandmaster Flash. We'll throw that one down for you. Liquid Liquid here. Uh, they wrote this song and then it was sampled and written into the big White Lines hit later in the decade by Grandmaster Flash. And so forth and so on. All right, bottom of the seventh. Three to two. Phillies. It'll be Burris continuing against Hubie. Battling Brooks. 56 pops the first. Ray Knight. 46, second X. This is Wilfong. He's good. He's a 220. And with two outs. Rance Mullinex, 5'11. Left X. This is going to be Herndon. He's good. He's a 289. But he makes a two base error. Let's double check that he rating. Yes, sir. D. Yes, sir. E. Bob. That's a two base error on Larry Herndon. Drops the fly ball there with two outs. High running scoring position for a leadoff hitter and pretty speedy catcher, John Stearns. 62, flies to left. Burris gets out of it. Into the eighth. How far are we going to go with Glenn Abbott here? You know something, folks? Down 0-2 in the series. I think they're just going to go right to Jeff Reardon. Jeff Reardon uh, came up with the Mets before he would go to the Expos and the Twins. Longtime closer. 8-7 and seven in 1980 with a 262 ERA and 110 innings. He's going to come in as a relief three, make sure there's no more damage done here. Can't afford it. Can't afford the sweep. So Reardon comes on in the eighth inning with his team down a run. It'll be Gary Maddox. 4-10 center X. This is Mazzilli's a two in center field. 2-E5 in center field. Makes a catch. Larry Herndon. 44. 4-4, off the Reardon card, you saw it. That is out of Shea Stadium. It's 4-2. Pete Rose, 3-10, flies to right, and with two outs, it's Keith Moreland, 2-9. Keith Moreland, the feeling, grounds the third. Woke up this morning and the sun was gone. Uh, let's see here. No defense to bring in for your Phil Phillies. With a 4-2 lead, six outs to get. Do we go Tom McGraw against a Met team that crushes lefties here? Um, let's kind of be a little creative here. Let's uh, let's take him out. Let's go Searage to start this. We got four, two lefties and two righties. Let's get Jerry Remy out of here. He can't hit lefties, so Remy will leave. Strike one for the Mets. And it'll be, oh boy, here. I guess Junior Kennedy will come in. Here's Ray Searage's card. Nice little lefty. A true lefty who gets lefties out, unlike Tuck McGraw, who is a lefty gets righties out. Searage was a Met in 81 with a 365 ERA and 37 innings. And now he's on the Phillies, trying to beat his Mets. 
Texas. Junior candidate, the pinch hitter. Here's the pitch. 65, flies to right. Now you have young blood, Brazilian Henderson. I think we're gonna hook him, that was fun. That was a fun little trick there. Got one of the players out of the game. And now we're gonna go Dick Dragon. Dick Drago, former Kansas City starter, Boston reliever. Here he is with the Phillies. He'll come on in the eighth inning. Dick Drago, they want to sweep too. The Phillies do not want this series to continue. They want to. They see how competitive the National League landscape is. They want to get a get a buy in their postseason. So young blood, Mazzilli, Henderson, all hit lefties better. So the, the righty Drago comes in to face Joel Youngblood in a 4-2 game. 30, 37 is a K. That's a walk against a lefty. And with two outs, it's Lee Mazzilli. 48 is a K for Dick Drago. We go to the 9th, 4-2 game. It's Mike Schmidt. Remy just takes over. Or Kennedy just plays second for Remy there. Mike Schmidt in the ninth, 63. Pitcher X, oh, Reardon's an E38. Oh, boy. Uh, yeah, uh, that's an error. Schmidt's got wheels. B Steeler. Bake Sale McBride, 212, pops out. Bob Boone, 34, pops out. And with two outs, the number seven hitter is now Larry Boa, replacing Klutz. 38, Boa, flies to right field. Buckle up, bottom of the ninth, fills. Sense it. They want a three-game sweep here. Tug McGraw is ready to go. I think you'll see... Oh, and Huey Brooks crushes lefties in the bottom half of his inning. Dick Drago, we'll see how far he can go here. Because you don't want Huey Brooks to face a lefty. He crushes them. So we'll see if we can get Drago through three batters, perhaps. And then after that, we'll go to the tugboat. Anyway, Steve Henderson will lead off in a 4-2 game in the ninth. 2-4, skies to center field. Dan Meyer, 56, is double one of five. That's a base hit. So, Huey Brooks does not have power versus righties. This will be his final batter. Meyer will just go down to second base as a B stealer with a two-run lead. It'll be Huey Brooks against Dick Drago. 1-4, skies to center field. And it's Ray Knight and uh, yeah we'll do it we'll do it we'll bring in the tugboat even though Ray Knight hits lefties better we like the tugboat he gets righties out inning in a third very good work for Drago but it's time to bring the tugboat in to get the final out here face the tie run former Met Current Philly, Tug McGraw, 1980, 5-4 with a sparkling 147 ERA in 92 innings. He uh, got the final out of the 1980 World Series. Trying to get the final out of this contest. And to do so, he will have to face Ray Knight. Let's take a look at Ray Knight's card. 1979 Cincinnati Red, 318 average, 10 home runs. We got him to New York sooner than he would have gotten there. He was on the World Series 86 Mets team, but we got Ray Knight to the Mets sooner than that for moments like this. The tie run with two outs in the ninth. Here's the pitch to Ray Knight. 2-6 is a base hit. Now you have two on and two outs. And it's Rance Mullinex. No, it's not. Batting, batting for Rance, Rance, Mullinex, Mullinex. Jose, Jose Morales, Morales. Let's take a look at Jose Morales. Perfect time for him. Long time pinch hitter, utility DH, backup catcher guy. Was with the Twins in 1980. Led him in hitting with a 303 average. Homer's a 1-5. You got two on and two outs. Jose Morales, Tub McGraw could walk this thing off. The pitch to Happy Jose. 38 for Morales is a fly ball to center field. And the uh, rally ends there, unfortunately, for the Mets. They lose the game, and they get swept. 4-2 is your final. McGraw does get the save. Did give up one hit in that. As it turns out, that run Reardon gave up made it a little dicey. Um, 
you know, if they didn't get that run, that makes the ninth inning even dicier for the Phillies. But they get the win, and, you know, you kind of figure that. The Phillies have the finish for these games. The Mets just are wandering around trying to figure out how to win kind of era for them. Got a bunch of nice pieces. They don't assemble very well. Reardon gave up a solo shot. And Abbott takes a tough loss here. He, for, for what his card does, he did everything he could. He got an unearned run in the first, two other runs. Only walked two, struck out two. McGraw gets a save while giving up a hit. Dick Drago got the final out. Got the final two outs, actually. Um, with two strikeouts and a hit. Searage got his one batter out. The ferocious Junior Kennedy. Ray Burris does get the victory. He gave up four hits and a couple runs in the early in this, then settled down nicely, but still pulled to preserve a, a victory for him. 1019 A three-game sweep in an early day of baseball. Yeah. Go mow the lawn now or something. Got all this extra time on my hands, thanks to the New York Mets, folding up like a cheap tent in three straight games. So clean out the rain spout maybe. That might be a fun thing to do when you when your Stratomatic series are cut short and you get sweeps, you have all this extra time in your hands, it's a good time to climb on the roof and clean out that rain spout. I always recommend that uh, when you get a sweep in a Stratomatic series. It's a good technique. Now if you go seven games, you gotta do that at some other day and just tolerate the uh, water spout off your roof there. So there you go. The Phillies now 14 and six. This is a case of Goofus and Gallant. The Phillies are the Gallant. 14 and 6, 290, 70 batting average, 369 ERA. Uh, lefties 4 and 1, doing lefty stuff. Uh, who's leading the fills and hits? Is it Mr. Moreland? Keith Moreland, a feeling? Close my eyes and it slipped away. 358 average for Keith Moreland, a feeling. And then the Mets, this is the uh, Goofus of Goofus and Gallant. They're nine and twelve. They're hitting 259. They got a 375 ERA. Uh, Glenn Abbott's now one and four. Frank Tanana, oh boy, not a good time to be a left-handed pitcher in this division, folks. Tanana's 0 and five. He's given up 29 runs, earned runs. He's given up 31 actually in 27 and two-thirds innings. So the whole lefty who dominates lefty thing just does not translate when. You got a bunch of right-handed hitters in the Phillies who crush lefties. So that, yeah, didn't work out. Leading hitter for the Mets, though. How about Steve Henderson? Let's break him up. 30 for 78. Always like Steve Henderson. Always slid under the radar. He put a put about a half a dozen pretty good years together. Hitting 280 or better, I think. I think he probably did it a half a dozen times or so. Nice little career for him. He's hitting 385 for your New York Mets. One last glimpse at the overall standings now as the Phillies improved to 14 and 6. They are playing 700 baseball in the National League. Well, let's give them the number one seed. Doesn't really matter. It's early in the season. Let's give them the number one. But look at this National League. They're, they're there. And then there, Houston is going to be here. You see that? Let's put a two in here, right there. There you go. And you got your uh, Portland team here. And you got the Reds. You got the Pirates. The uh, we are family pirates trying to get a wild card spot or two games behind the Reds there. Fun times, good times everywhere. Yep, good times in the National League in this timeline. Bunch of candidates to win the World Series, including the Phillies. The Reds, sure, they have a best team in baseball in 81, so they can certainly do it. The Pirates, 79 Pirates, they could do it. Out West, the Astros won the division in 80, won the division in 81. Dodgers won the World Series in 81. They're struggling. So there's a bunch of interesting candidates in this timeline to come away with the World Series. The 82 Cardinals, probably not. Maybe because we still have Ozzie Smith on the Padres, and we still have Lonnie Smith, as you saw, on the Phillies. So we haven't made the big transaction yet. So, yeah. That's why the Cardinals are probably stumbling just a little bit. Next year, they will probably be playing for a world championship. So, 
That's it from the National League. Break up your Phillies. Taking care of business. A three-game sweep of the New York Mets. Thanks for checking out the Game of the Week. We'll see you next week.